Hi everyone and welcome back to part two of What Reigns of Edith Finch, part one with Super Freaky, uh, absolutely uh, off the rocker. So uh, hopefully part two is going to be as good. If you guys do enjoy the video, please do go ahead, like, subscribe and comment. And if you guys aren't already following me on Twitch, please do go ahead and follow me on there at Slinky as well. I appreciate it. Okay, seems like we go down here. I guess now I know why mom doesn't like me playing with the music box. Okay. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Bruh. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. Okay. Creepy. It's funny. All those times I played with the music box and never found the basement key. Wait, we have a basement key? When did we get the basement key? Why do I not remember getting the basement key? Wait, which one's the basement? Okay. We... Wait, maybe we turn this? Yeah, 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 because this was in the... Okay, there we go. Okay, this is a bit creepy last time we came down here. Is it nicer now? Wait, why can we not see ourselves? Oh! Because it's not a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> what a prick. Oops. I thought that was a mirror. The basement was off limits. Unless I wanted another tetanus shot. Okay. I don't know what you're storing down here, but Jesus. Okay. I saw Edie sneak down to the basement once. Carrying packages. Drug mules. I thought maybe she was hiding presents. It turned out she was hiding a lot more than that. What the hell? I remember asking mom once about where Walter had gone. She said after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. If there's a pattern in all these stories, I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. It's so weird. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. On that first day, after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive a week. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. Okay. That's what kept me sane. No Having ice. Schedule, living for today. What is it? Sausages? I always expect it to be dead tomorrow. The one night. It's all peaches. But if you wait long enough, you'll be used to anything. Keep you eating your peaches, mate. Even monster before. on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just... stopped. Whatever that thing was, it was gone. Maybe you got tired of waiting. Oh. Or maybe I just got tired of being afraid. It's been a week now, the longest in 30 years. I'm done waiting. I have to leave while well, I still can.
I, I sincerely hope you you lot know what's going on because I have no clue. Super confused. What cave in the bottom of this I know house? It's out there somewhere. Whatever killed Barbara. Molly. And Calvin. Maybe this is all a mistake. But I need to stop living the same day. Even if it kills me. Whatever's out there. I want you to know, I'm ready for it. I'm going to appreciate all of it, especially the food. I don't mind if I only have a year left. Or a month. Or a single week. I'd be happy with one real day. Love that. Great attitude to have in life. I already imagine the sun on my face. I might have spoke too soon there. Oops. Just before he got hit by a train. Oh, Walter quiet. died when I was six. I can't believe my mom never told me he was down here. Yeah. Well, these I'm are. Sure uh, my mom was trying to protect me. A little bit depressing. I assume we just just venture down. Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. But if she never told me about an uncle under the house, I can only imagine what else she was hiding. Okay. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made. Trying to bury something that's still alive. Now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two, I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse, we made it real. I don't what? know if I should even be writing this. Got someone up there. I think there's a statue of someone. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. That's creepy. I thought you should know about your the family. History you're a part of. Hey, what? Can I go out to the sea? Though, to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I don't think you should say that. I, I have no clue what's going on. stories believed them, for what that's worth. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been more confused by gaming all my life. Let's go up this way. I'm 
when you look at the house, at that history of imagination and stubbornness and madness, any of it seems possible. I was gonna say, can I, can I pause? I think we've been surrounded by death for so long, we've just gotten used to it. That's sad. What kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? Damn, man. It's embarrassing for me to admit this, but... The pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. There's a lot of people. Three of the gerbils are mine, and two had been my fault. Oops. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. I really, really, really want to know what happened to Molly. Molly was a strange, strange death. I mean, Calvin was only 11 as well. Barbara is pretty weird as well, to be fair. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. That's pretty cool. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide. said she dreamed about the old house every night. Through this venture back. The side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. Hmm. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. This game is so hard. Looking back on it now, if she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. Me turn back. Uh. Mm. 
Okay, I was about to take a dark turn for a second there. Literally dark, I mean darker than it has been. Um, you know. Oh, Orlando. <laughs> Obviously. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. They were both pretty intense. Just a bit. Sam spent his life shooting photos, but Mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. Sharks. Sharks are scary. Instead of hiding from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. Wait, that was a cat that that wasn't attacking a squirrel. It was a what was attacking? It was attacking. I don't think it was attacking a squirrel in the first part we played. What am I missing? Ah, the thing that's literally lit up. That. Dawn, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm hmm. Am I gonna have to shoot anything? It's a hunting trip, Don. Shooting is strongly encouraged. What? Perfect. It's gonna rain the whole weekend, isn't it? Please just take the damn picture. Hey, language. I will never forget this weekend, Dad. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. A camera's older than you are. Hmm. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. Well now. Hey, Dad, it's starting to clear up. Still freezing Aww. though. I get so many life is strange vibes from this game. It's absolutely brilliant. I take a picture of you. I definitely won't be moving. Are you done yet? Does it sound like I'm done? Oop. A little more gas in the tank, I guess. I feel so uncomfortable right now. Taking photos of a man pissing. Hey! <laughs> That's a keeper. Is this what I've become? I'm just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was going to be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Last time I was with my brother Calvin. That was a great trip. Your grandpa Sven taught us how to fish. How to build a fire. We found an old logging trail. There were deer everywhere. 
bet if I could remember where that trail was, we'd spot a buck for you in no time. Give me a minute to check the map. Let's see. Is that bird? No. Am I meant to be looking for something right now? Maybe. Maybe we're going to take a photo of him. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? Could have been. You don't need to waste any more film on me, kiddo. I don't know what else I'm wasting film on. Oh, my friend, it's like a photo of, damn it. Dad! Good eyes, Don. So, that, obviously. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. As soon as I find you. Dad, I... Let me get behind you. Do I have to do this? Don, you don't have to do anything. If you want to survive, you need to be strong. Yourself squared up, elbows down, like we pray. Great shot, Don. <laughs> What's that expect to that, Jesus? Okay, she's in tears, and we're just gonna take a photo of it. Sure. I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? <laughs> she doesn't seem very proud of herself. Sorry, Don. Just got to reset the timer. Hey. Hang on, kiddo. Just trying to get a shot of the two of us together. I meant to be on the left hand side of that, maybe? Dad, it's twitching. Okay. I think That's it's totally so normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about it. Dad! Oh my god. Of all these stories. That's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. Being, oh my, I could not imagine that as a kid. Holy crap. That's PTSD right there. That's horrible. I was so messed up. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. No kidding. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh? When he thought he was alone. Like something funny was happening, but only he could see.
I don't want Gracie to hear this. I do not want to hear this. Have told us about the world we saw. <laughs> This is, this is oh, thank God it ended. About Gregory, about everything. So Gregory drowned. But I know what happened wasn't your fault. So you never leave Kisselin in the bath. It's a parent, man. Somebody's somebody's just hit home. So deep. My mom rock club after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. Can't imagine what it was like for her to lose two sons after she'd already lost two brothers. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. And Lewis is her brother? I'm pretty sure. When my dad died, I don't think Mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. And to see kids in the house again. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, things were good, almost normal, but it didn't last. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. Sorry, what? After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. Yeah, so Milton's not technically dead. That's why he, uh, he doesn't have a left eight. this up and went she just pull yourself up wait is it just a I don't know it is Milton Finch in the magic paintbrush I remember that when we were kids Many, many, many years ago. I was four when Milton 
and disappeared. Okay. Milton would be like 20 now, I think. Guys, the soundtrack in this game is absolutely beautiful. Oh, there we go. Mom spent months searching for my brother. And she sealed the doors. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Hmm. Now where do we go? I already did that. I don't know why. Ah. Like a different area. I don't remember like a bed. Guess we go back. Oh no, there's a bit up here. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but. I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room. Until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Well, Lewis is dead as well. Jesus. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room. Except Lewis. Oh, that way? We on a speedboat. Yeah, we're on a boat. Some sort of boat. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Hmm. I wonder what that could be. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His oh. mind began to... Lovely. So thank thankfully we can't put our hand over there and it just chops our hand off. Uh, One. Oh. Give me fish. This is fun. Guillotine simulator. How am I meant to shake the next bit? Uh, do I just keep doing this? I'm already sure.
I just meant to wait for them to pile up or something? This don't feel right. Yeah, I really don't know how to progress this. That noise is not nice. Uh... Wait. Was a left control stick this whole time. Oh, are you kidding me? I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. Okay. That was pretty cool. Fat like very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. Yeah, mental health illness isn't a uh, isn't a joke, I'm afraid. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like mm. a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I wonder how he died. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. It's always good friends. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. Built the city up slowly, brick by brick. It was like RuneScape, didn't it? Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. Okay. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Nothing wrong with that. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit but concerning. But his was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were not real were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. I think I might see where this is he going, actually. For mayor. And he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It's like Type 1 bipolar, maybe? Look like dysphoria. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Lewisville. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Uh. 
Yeah, it's such a shame. Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a handsome queen. Okay. Interesting. Is he going to have an imaginary girlfriend now? The queen was on her own quest for. This game's dark enough. Go red Yeah. He followed the sound of her. Silver harp. Silver harp. Probably the nicest figure this game so far. His chase Everyone else led has him been to depressing. a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. Fuck off, he knew the world was all oh, his imagination. Fish. But he was so proud of Get out. Go away. Wait. There we go. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. Mm. He'd become Someone a queen. Who'd never known success in the real world. I think it was overwhelming. struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace that sounds a lot like Bob Pella type 1 unfortunately my imagination is as real as my body he told me it was hard to argue with him Began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Such a shame. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. I really hope this doesn't play out how I think this does. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. It was in the point of view of the psychiatrist then, can't we? The palace would be packed with his companions. Cool. Including the wise Calico who insisted on advising him. Okay. Sure. Maybe you're in a, a judgment here. Spear now, sir. Holding his crown. There was only one thing left to do. Marry the Queen?
know who's coming to this. Oh, God, really? Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, God. I, I was hoping it wasn't going to be this. He couldn't handle what his life was. Yeah. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. He couldn't handle his... Like, that his life was just... Just all he was was a canner. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. We got, yeah, we got that dog, can't we? That one was so sad. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. What happened? But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. What happened? Last day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue. I'm sorry, you're right. So We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last. I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. No, we can't see in there. afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. What's your shame? I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. 
They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. No, I've seen that house every day of my life. Okay. But I never thought I'd go back to it. Yeah. Looks a little bit run down. I lost my way. I got turned around. For a while, I wandered. Seeing things. Oh, cool. It's good to see that. I can be real. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Okay. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. I'm to Edie. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. Let's pick up. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. The rest happened pretty quickly. <laughs> she got better for a while, and then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. Brilliant game. Brilliant game. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. You what? This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck.
Which that was Edith. What a beautiful game. Absolutely beautiful game. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Um, I don't know if there's actually any extras. I think it says the credits. It is. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all did enjoy. Um, and unfortunately, that is the end. I will be recording more videos. And uh, like I say, if you guys do uh, do like Phasmophobia or any of horror games, please do feel free to go and check me out on Twitch at Slinky. But uh, without further ado, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you all for watching. I do appreciate it. And if you did enjoy it, please do like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for being here. Toodaloo.